Assalamu alaikum, family. Peace, healing, and light. And welcome back to another episode of Healing with Angelica's podcast, where we discuss all things healing. And if you are new to the show, I just want to say welcome, beautiful souls. On today's episode, we have a special guest joining us today, our brother, student minister of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, author, activist, mentor, and entrepreneur, is back again. Brother Nori Muhammad, as we'll be discussing today's topic, The Divine Love of the Man and Woman, Part 2. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Nori. Thank you so much for joining me again. How are you? Wa alaikum salam, Sister Angelica. I'm fine by Allah's grace, doing better than I deserve to be doing, and happy to be uh, able to share a space and time with you and the wonderful audience that you have on this platform. <laughs> yes, yes, praise be to Allah. Again, it is a pleasure to have my brother back on the show again. Praise be to Allah. And for those who may not know who Brother Nuri is now, y'all should know who he is. But for those who may not know who Brother Nuri is, I would like to give you all a brief bio. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Brother Nuri is known for messages that have a balanced mix of inspiration and information, which has made, made him one of the most sought after speakers in the country, whether it is high school, church, college, prison, banquet, or conferences. His gift to collaborate scriptural, scripture, science, and history in a user-friendly way has him delivering hundreds of messages a year in the United States and abroad. He is the author of now seven books, right? Yes, oh, Yes, <laughs> an author of now seven books. Uh, we have Before You Say I Do, After You Say I Do, I Let This Mind Be In You, The Seven Jewels of God, The Black Woman, The Second Self of God, my favorite, a well-made man in his new book that has just been recently released. I'm going to put it up here on the screen. The Mathematics of the Mind, in which tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern on Closing a Gap, inshallah, Brother Nuri will speak more about it. Yes, and three of his books, which are best sellers on Amazon Books. Excerpts of his speeches have been used in the songs of several major recording artists. Brother Nuri also released his own album titled The Black Excellence Mesto Manifesto, Value One, a rhythm of truth project that mixed Brother Nuri's lecture excerpts with hip hop and R&B artists land tracks of nine critical subjects of black excellence. Nuri Muhammad has appeared on The Breakfast Club with Charlamagne, Char Charlamagne the God, DJ MB, Angela Yee, The Daily Show with Trevor Nope, Revolt TV, A Vlad TV with DJ Vlad, Ebro in the Morning on Hot 97, and the Joe By Button, sorry, Joe Button podcast. <laughs> In addition to the national and international contribution he makes, Brother Nuri takes great pride in being the student minister of Muhammad Mosque number 74 in Indianapolis. This state of the art, the state of the art facility is in which houses the mosque, classrooms, and two restaurants, eat to live cafe, and always been. It is affectionately called the Miracle on 38th Street because it was purchased by young black people, designed by black architects, and renovated by all black construction. The multi million dollar complex is owned by the mosque number 74 community completely debt free our uh, praises due to Allah brother Nuri now let's get started on today's episode the divine love of the man and woman part two and please don't let me be the only one asking questions please do not hesitate to put any questions you may have for our special guest brother Nuri Muhammad in the comment box below inshallah I will strive to get to all of the questions so, Brother Nuri, I am very excited to be discussing this well-needed topic because differences, since you've been away, Brother Nuri, differences have been raging 
between <laughs> men and women relationships. Yeah. <laughs> However, today you are in the right space in time, audience, because our good brother, Brother Nuri, will shine some light on this topic today. So in an interview that you did with Breakfast Club, Brother Nuri, you stated the most important decision you would ever make in your life after choosing to believe in God is a mate you choose to spend the rest of your life with. Woo. <laughs> mm. And that brings me to my first question for you, Brother Nuri. Why is choosing the right mate one of the most important decisions one makes in life? Well, as I finished, when you finished that statement, I, I said, for the mates you choose will either inspire you to grow into your greatness or they'll confine you to complacency. Mm -hmm. They will either be your other half or they'll make you half of yourself. The minister, he said it like this, that a good relationship brings out the best in you and makes you more youthful, while a bad relationship will bring out the worst in you and cause you to age prematurely. So when you unpack that revelation that God gave through to the minister, He's telling you that if you get into the wrong relationship, if you plant your love in the wrong soil, just like whatever is in the soil, the toxins, the chemicals, or the nutrients, whatever's in the soil will integrate with the seed. And when the product of that seed grows, it will have the nature of both the soil and itself. Well, so it is whenever you plant your love, in the wrong place, whatever that person is that you are with, you're going to become part of them and they're going to become part of you. So if you don't choose wisely, you'll find yourself getting old in a young body. You'll find yourself manifesting the worst parts of yourself. But if you make the right choice, you'll find yourself getting more youthful and the best of you will be brought forth. So that is uh, that is an observation that that the minister has made and that God made to give him that statement um, of the way male and female relationships have gone on our planet for trillions of years. That's the positive and the negative side of choosing your mate. Mm, praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. I love that. Um, now, what role does communication, I think this is very important as um, when we think about relationship problems, um, it really lacks, uh, we have a lack of communication. Um, so what role does communication and understanding play in fostering healthy relationship between men and women? The high percentage of what causes the breakup in relationships is rooted in poor communication. The minister put it into the high 80% of all problems. He either said 80 or 90% of all the problems we're having in relationships come from poor communication. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, when you're married or whenever you are civilized, two grown, mature, civilized people that love, like, or respect each other, they should not argue with each other. They should have discussions. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between an argument and a discussion. Our argument is when two people go back and forth to find out who is right. But a discussion is when two people go back and forth with one another in a calm, civil manner to figure out what is right. And what when you find out that what, whether male or female, whether I started it or you started it, when the truth is there, everybody has to lower their wing. Uh, to that truth. So we um, we have a bad habit. And I, I always tell a story whenever we have uh, we had a lot of employees in the mosque because we have so much going on. I used to just uh, make a little observation and a joke with everybody because I could always tell when they were talking to their husbands or wives or when they were talking to another brother, sister or a customer. And I would always say, you, was you, just, you just was talking to your husband? <laughs> like, yes, how did you know that? <laughs> oh, I tell the brother, was that, that was your wife? Yeah, how, how did you know that? And I said, because you was cold, mean, and short. 
<laughs> it's a shame that the people that have that are in our life that we're supposed to love the most that we extract the most from that give us the most in life those are the ones that we are the coldest and the meanest and the shortest with mm -hmm. we're kind we're considerate we're patient with customers kind considerate and patient with sisters and brothers but cold short and hard with the ones we say we love. So in that sense, Sister Angelica, there has to be the uh, uh, acceptance of the golden rule in domestic affairs. What is the golden rule? Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the minister one day, he said, brother, the true religion of God is treating others or doing unto others you would have them to do one to you we follow that with strangers mm. sometimes we don't follow that with the people that we call our husband and our wife and because of that because of the anger the bitterness the resentment and sometimes the tone of hatred in the voice mm. uh we are we're speaking even if it's the truth it's not the what most of the time that caused the problem It's the way hmm. and you might have rain but if it gets caught in a cold current that rain becomes snow ice or hail that doesn't water but damages whatever it hits so it is in the relationships when you communicate you might have truth it might be rain but what kind of current did it get caught in hmm. was it a cold heart was it bitterness anger was it hatred resentment whatever it was once it gets caught in that cold current the water becomes ice and the ice doesn't nurture the ice damages mm. i love that analogy praise be to allah now in your experience of i'm sorry in your experience what are some common misconceptions that both men and women have about relationships well, of course, the, you know, our, our brains sometimes are improperly programmed by music and, and we're listening to the verbal expression over top of a beat of, of a fantasy. And we want the relationship to be the manifestation of a lyrical, poetic, smooth voice sounding over top of a beat fairy tale. And marriage is not that. So, so when you get involved in a relationship and realize that marriage is work, I always tell those that are thinking, am I ready to get married? They ask a lot. Do you think I'm ready to get married? And I always say, I, I don't want to be the judge of it, but I will tell you this. If you're bad at being single, you will be horrible at being married. Mm. <laughs> so one big misconception, Sister Angelica, is that when I get married, it's going to take away all of my problems. Soon as I get married, I'm going to be happy. Soon as I get married, I'm not going to be tempted to do wrong no more. As soon as I get married, everything is just going to fall in place and be all right. No, marriage is work. And if you are bad at being single, you're going to be horrible at being married so a misconception is that you're going to meet all of those things you're looking for peace and contentment of mind love peace and happiness all i gotta do is find the right him or her no all you gotta do is find the right relationship with the god you already have in your life mm -hmm. and when you do get married they won't be that which completes you there'll be that which adds to you because you would have been in the process of completion with your relationship with your God. Mm, mm, I love that. I love that completion. Mm, praise be to Allah. I did want to um, go on to some questions that I had emailed to me before the show. I told them, yeah, you want some questions <laughs> answered, go ahead and send it. So um, I have a question here from Sister Angela Muhammad from Dayton, Ohio. 
She asks, please share ways to appropriately and kindly communicate or discuss with your spouse or partner when dealing with a sensitive matter, such as finances or how to raise children in blended family? Well, that's a very good question. And those are some very, very serious and potentially uh, touchy topics. So the, you know, one of the, the best formats of communication is to, to praise what you want to raise. In other words, whatever you want to see, whatever you want to see more often, more than likely you're seeing your partner manifest it every now and then. Soon as they manifest whatever you want to see more often, praise them, acknowledge it, show how much it made you feel, how, how happy it made you whenever they did this, that or the other or handled this that way in finance. So show how if you know you got somebody that has a problem with the proper uh, management of resources, those moments in time, whenever you see them acting with uh, a dollar discipline where they don't spend in a stupid way, when you see them doing that, you, you got to praise what you want to raise. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the times we, we can we can avoid having an argument or a disagreement if every time our mate does the thing every now and then that we wish they would do all the time when they do it every now and then praise and applaud it that there's a saying that you'll find it's in a uh, a book dealing with the uh seven strategies of effective leadership by i think stephen covey he he dis, he does an assessment of men in the military uh, going to study different men in the military in all different nations. Look at this. He says that men generally gravitate wherever the applause is. Mm. So as a woman, if you want to see your man manifest certain qualities more often, anytime you find him doing them, you got to give him some applause because men naturally gravitate wherever the applause is. So that's one way. Praise what you want to raise. Uh, and of course, you know, sometimes you have to sit down and have a non-distracted, serious conversation. So you plan it. You know, honey, do you think we can have some time where we can sit down and have a serious uh, discussion on how we can employ some strategies, tactics, and maneuvers to be a good team and more effective at this blended family situation or, or at this money management issue. And then when you sit down at the table, same, sober, non-distracted, nobody scrolling through their phone, nobody answering their phone, nobody looking down, texting while they're talking, just me and you, and we are developing strategies. And then all the time that, that you, you're, you're hearing an idea from them, you're doing what? Praising what you want. That's a good idea. I'm going to write that down. Then whenever you say something, guess what he's going to do? Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to write that down. Okay, so what do we come up with? This is our strategy. We said this, 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 that, and that will work. And we need to stop doing this, that, and the other. You, you, I need to stop doing that. You need to, okay, we agree. Ready, break. Now the, the huddle's done and you go to the task and you, you really become excited about the new challenge of being able to deal with the financial issue or the blended family issue, or whatever issue. Now you become excited because you all have joined together as, as teammates prepared to see if you can solve a problem or make a change together. Then you come back and then you have your, your, uh, your after recon meeting three weeks later, we've been working our strategy. Have you noticed so forth? Yes, I have. So mm -hmm. forth. Do you see anything else you think we should do? Let's try so forth and so forth. And then it ends up becoming uh, an expression of joy and you like winning together, mm -hmm. not going back and forth with each other on which person's strategy is best. You, you put your heads together, come up with best practices, make an agreement put your hand in the huddle, call on a law, step out there to make the change in unity. 
Mm, mm, yes, yes, that teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> yes, yes, praise be to Allah. That actually takes me to my next question because it seems like we're having a little bit of issue with the teamwork here, Brother Neri. So I just want to know what are your thoughts on the division between men and women when it comes to relationships? Well, you know, there is, as you just said, there is a, uh, there seems to be a social trend where it is man versus woman. But the question is, when you see any conflict or disagreement, question you want to raise to find out the origin of it is who benefits the most from it. Mm. So when you look at the destruction of the black family, our enemies are the ones that benefit from that. This has always been a part of the modus operandi of the slave traders, slave makers, and the slave masters. When they got us in Africa and they put us on the ships, they put the children on one side, the parents on the other, never allowed them to nurse their children, let, let the mothers and father listen to their children die in the whole of the slave ship. We got to America, made slaves. They didn't allow us to marry one another. It was against the law to marry. This is where the jump in the broom stuff comes from. Mm. We, we, it was against the law to marry, but it wasn't against the law to sweep master's porch. Mm. So if a man and woman had love or feelings for each other, they would sneak and have a ceremony by jumping over the broom and then getting back to work. It was against the law. They breeded us. Mm -hmm. Made men that were that were strong bucks mate with women of another plantation that happened to be fertile at the moment. They didn't let them get to know each other, love each other. They threw them inside of horse stables like animals and made them have sexual intercourse, not to produce a son or daughter that the two were going to raise, but to produce a new slave for the plantation. Then. Uh, white men came in the home, into the slave huts, raping our women, mothers, daughters, and wives, and we couldn't do nothing about it. So you look at the mathematics, you know, it's always been the, the goal and aim of the enemy to destroy the relationship of the black man and black woman together because they know, know then, knew then and know now that the real power base of the black nation is the black family. Mm -hmm. When Napoleon was training his cannons on the Sphinx, hired by the European governments to go into Africa and destroy all of the images of black excellence, he attacked the mystery schools, he attacked the temples, he attacked uh, everywhere you could find black greatness, he destroyed those images but he also went inside of the pyramids. And when he went into the greatest of the pyramids that still one of the last living wonders of the world, Giza, he noticed on the walls of Giza that anytime he seen the male God right next to the male God was the female God. Mm -hmm. So you never seen Isis without her man, Osiris. You never seen the man us uh, Asa without his queen Ilida. Everywhere you seen uh, Osa, you will see Aset. That they, they always the male and female. But now you go into the pyramid Giza, and you can tell that somebody's been scraping mm. the image of the women that were with the man, because they knew then, like they know now, mm. that the real power base of the black nation is whenever the black man and the woman, not independent, but interdependent entities, connect with one another and borrow strength from one another, we are able to be able to build a strong nation. Mm -hmm. So they have the, 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 the enemy knows this, that where there are no strong marriages, you can't have strong families. Where there are no strong families, you can't have a strong community. Communities make nations, nations make a world. So you'll never get the hood right until you get the home right. So if he can keep the home divided, he will keep the hood divided. 
Mm -hmm. And if he keeps the hood divided, the hood will never become a, a nation and will never have control of the world like God wants us to. So this man versus woman, this is not the product of one brother on YouTube and another sister on another channel. Oh, this is not a result of an interview of a celebrity that has something negative to say about the man she used to be with. This is a direct result of social engineers, mm. architects of confusion that manipulate social media and all other forms of media to put the black man at odds with the black woman and the black woman at odds with the black man. Go read The Making of a Slave by Willie Lynch. That's homework for my viewers. Go check it out and look at what they said they wanted to do when it came to the black male and black female relationship. Make her feel like she's independent of her man, that she will be in a psychologically frozen state. Mm. This is their terminology. So that there, there, there is a there's a scientist of evil that are behind all of this and they might have a few negro representatives talking on their behalf but at the root of it is the architecture of confusion social engineers that are are open in that are this versus woman this is not us doing this to ourselves this is them doing it to us and we should not participate in such foolishness mm. You went in depth about that. Oh my God, thank you so much. And what was the book you said, Making of a Slave? Making of a Slave. But just look up the Making of a Slave by Willie Lynch. Uh, it's attached to the Willie Lynch letter, letter. And it's easy. Just Google it, you'll see it, and it'll give you a breakdown of some of the strategies that they employ. And remember, Willie Lynch was, was hired in 1712. Mm. by the slave masters in America because they were losing too many slaves by the way they treated them. But he had a very successful, productive plantation mm. in the West Indies. So the American white man hired Willie Lynch to be a business consultant, to come over and do seminars with white slave masters in America to teach them how to get maximum productivity out of their slaves with minimum loss of life. And when Willie Lynch came, he told him, look, I have a foolproof plan in my bag that I've used on my modest plantation in the West Indies, and, and it works. It's, it's foolproof. If you employ it for one year, the slaves will become self-fueling or self-perpetuating for 300 years, maybe even a 1,000. And then he goes into what, he, what his primary foundation was and he says this he says i've outlined a number of differences among the slaves mm. and i make these differences bigger than what they actually are so he took natural differences that we have and turned them into unnatural divisions he said age young versus old old versus young the mm. ones on a small plantation against the ones on a big plantation vice versa. Then he said this, light against dark, dark against light, straight hair against coarse hair, coarse hair, even tall against short, short against tall. But look at what he said, the male against the female and the female against the male. And then he breaks down the, the strategy of making the woman feel strong and making the man feel weak that he could turn us upside down and inside out so check it out and read in depth of it but this was a strategy that started in 1555 when they first kidnapped us to make us slaves and they have never stopped employing this strategy because they know that the real power base of the black nation is the black family and if they can keep us at odds with each other not willing to and wanting to desirous of marrying one another and taking care of each other if the home's not right the hood will never be right and if the hood's not right we'll never be able to have a nation and rule the world like god wants us to mm, 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 mm. 
Praise be to Allah. You went so in depth that I wouldn't even have thought just about how far this division between men and women really goes. Like it goes way back and way back into history and you can see it continuously happening now. So I'm so glad that you that you brought that up. Praise be to Allah. And if you all are enjoying this episode just as well as I am, please, 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 please show your support by donating today to Cash App Dollar Signs Healing with Angelica to help sustain future episodes just like this. Also, if you are enjoying all of the episodes here on the broadcast, Closing the Gap broadcast, please show your support as well by donating today. Information to donate will be shown on the screen below. Also, please put your fires in the comment box. Let me know again if you are enjoying this episode. I need everyone who's on the show to interact. Put your questions in the comment box. Put those fire signs up. Let me know that the show is going great so far. I love you all. Now let's get back to today's show, The Divine Love of Men and Women, Part 2, with Brother Nuri Mohammed. So I am going to go to my next question here from an audience guest here. He sent in his question yesterday. We have here a question from our brother, Tony Mohammed from Miami, Florida. Assalamu alaikum. Is courtship in the way and manner it is designed for us in the nation just designed exclusive, exclusively for us? or is it intended to serve as a standard example to all religious communities? D, the last thing you said. <laughs> well, I, and I will say this to Brother Tony and those in our viewing audience. Um, we, by the grace of Allah, we were able to, uh, in our book, Before You Say I Do, teach on the, uh, really the, the protocols for courtship that Allah God gave to the honor of Elijah Muhammad to give to us, to safeguard us in the investigative process of choosing a mate. And by putting it in this book and structuring it with, with evidence from scripture, science, history, and math, uh, and nature, we were able to convince Listen to this. Not not a few hundreds, mm. hundreds of brothers and sisters all over the world said and have written to us saying that I never knew about it. All I was taught was dating. Yes. And nobody ever told me any rules to dating. Well, the reason they didn't is because there are no rules. <laughs> dating is when two people just are getting to around each other. And seeing what's going to happen, good, bad, or ugly, with no parameters to protect you. But courtship is when two people are interacting with each other in, in a mental and a spiritual way with no physical contact to see if this is the right one that I will call my life's partner uh, for, forever. So we've had so many testimonies, hundreds of them, where those that never knew about it employed it and two people agree that we are getting to know each other but we are not going to get into the filly filly and the touchy touchy and and we're going to keep a sane sober mind uh in the process of exploration and we're going to weigh the evidence and if we find out that the evidence says that you know that you are the one then we will we will get married and then we will participate in the aspects of relationships that are sanctioned by God after you make the commitment. And so far we've had great, great testimonies from how much healthier uh, of a relationship they have after following the courtship uh, process. So this is, this is a process, sisters and brothers, where you, you keep yourself out of physical contact with each other with no premarital sex, no, no kissing, no, no, no touching on each other at all. And you, tr you strive to be only together when you have a chaperone to help guard you against your feelings uh, of, of lust 
or even of love that you may feel that makes you want to participate uh, in intimacy. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, uh, you are able to avoid the, the emotions that come from physical intimacy. Those emotions have a blinding quality to them. And you will find yourself not able to see red flags the minute that you engage in premarital sex. And then whenever you get together and the, the emotions began to settle from the physical activity, next thing you know, the red flags are showing up. Mm -hmm. But you've already said I do. And now you want to say I don't anymore. So it's a very good safeguard that keeps you civil. And uh, not only is it divine, but in any civilized society, this has always been the way. It, matter of fact, it's not just, it, not just divine, it's gangster. <laughs> you don't believe me, go watch The Godfather. <laughs> and whenever Michael Corleone, whenever y'all remember when he had to whack th them two bosses and he got that, that pistol from behind the toilet? And came out and whacked him two bosses and he they had to fly him and hide him in Sicily. And when he got into Sicily, he he seen a young female that he was interested in. Watch, look what he did. He went to the to the house and talked to the father. Mm. Not to ask, could he marry her, just to ask, could he even have a conversation with her? Mm. And he, the father, investigated him and said, fine. Next thing you know, you see him and the, the female he's interested in, they're walking out in the middle of Sicily outside broad daylight. And then the camera pans up and you look about 20 feet away and it's her uncle, her brothers, all the male members of the family. They walking real close by while, they out there, while he's out there getting to know her. See, that, that's the way that civilized people do things. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to protect the male and the female from engaging in activities that will cloud their judgment and cause them to make a decision that they would not have made had they remained sober, non-intoxicated from the emotions of physical intimacy. This is what courtship is about. So it's for everybody. Try it out. <laughs> Try it out. And it'll keep you sane, keep you sober, keep your eyes open. You'll see red flags and you all. Uh, we'll make a better decision. Mm, mm, thank you so much for elaborating on that, because I'm telling you, um, even um, I was speaking with my father about the process of courtship. He's like, wow, that's I've never heard of that. I like that. You know, it's it's really like it's, it's, it's just something that we all should partake in, even those who are not even in a nation. Um, like I said, I told my father about it and he was like, wow, that is a beautiful process. I wish we was doing that, you know, because when you really think about it, it really is a safe, a safeguard, especially for us as women, because us as women are really emotionally, we're more emotionally attached and can That's get right. attached you know, other than men, you know. So right. I do want to elaborate just a little bit on the importance of, and maybe you can elaborate on it, um, the importance of um, not having sex uh, before marriage and why that is important and to have an understanding of that during the courtship process. Well, that's the main, like I said, the main reason is to keep you from being uh, clouded in view and sober. This is the reason why the, that God himself prescribed that as the proper way of relating. You don't want to. I, I, I'll give you an example. There was a couple that one of the first couples that I ever married. I may have only been 19 or 20 when I married them. And they were also very young. Mm -hmm. And. Um, over the course of years, they had many problems. And so in one of the sessions, I decided to ask a question. I said, let me ask you this. Did you all uh, engage? Was you all physically with each other before you got married? And both of them said yes. 
Then I asked this, Sister Angelica. I said, let me ask you this. Do you think that had you all not already committed the act of intimacy, do you think that you all still would have gotten married to each other? One of them said no, and the other one said yes. Mm. <laughs> the sister said yes. The brother said no. So now you have somebody that has made the biggest life decision after choosing to believe in God out of guilt, not out of love. Mm. And as a result, the two did not make it. Four children later, they did not make it. So look at the damage that is done to the woman that has been held hostage for all those years in a relationship. Look, look at the damage that is done now to the children who have been absent their father and the optimal family structure that will give them a platform to be the best that they can be with the minimum amount of stress of life. See, see all of those are, are the side effects of not doing it right. So you, you and I should want, you know, to bring God with us in our relationship. In fact, marriage, the synonyms for marriage are holy matrimony, a covenant connection, and a sacred union. These are all divine and spiritual terms. If they're divine and spiritual terms and marriage is a divine and spiritual process, don't you want God to come with you mm -hmm. when you start it? So don't, you don't want to get involved in activities that are a violation of the law, statutes, and rules of God and then start a relationship and you're not for sure whether God is with you or not. Mm -hmm. Why not say, you know what? I'm not going to commit no fornication. I'm going to abstain because this is the way that God wants it to be. And if I do so, I can go into this with more confidence that is God coming with me because marriage is not a two party system. Mm. Marriage is a three party system. Yeah. It's you, your mate and God himself. And it's really structured in a triangle. Yes. You and your mate are down here on these two ends and you don't get closer to each other by moving down the bottom line. You get closer to each other by going up into striving to become one with your God. Mm. And as long as you live your life striving to be pleasing to the God as a man and as a woman, you don't have to put any energy getting close to each other. You're going to naturally get close to each other the closer you get to God in unity. So that kind of mathematics uh, and that's what the courtship does. That's why premarital sex uh, is dangerous because it has the potential to edge God out of the equation mm. when you start this most complicated uh, relationship of commitment. We should want to go in to the complications of commitment with the wisdom of God and the presence of God as much as possible. And to do so, we can do it better whenever we go into it following his laws and rules. And that's no premarital sex. Mm. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful demonstration. I love that. Praise be to a lie. Yes, though. So I also, as we as we were talking about this part, um, I also thought about those relationships that actually have already started. And um, things already done transpired as far as, you know, sex, I guess. Is it possible to make that work out? Relationships that has already engaged into the act. Like what would be an advice for those who want to make it work out, but work, work it out better in the righteous way? after making that mistake. The minister in one of his uh, answers on Twitter just made, look, listen to this one little sentence statement. He said, God is always anxious and ready 
to forgive you. I said, wow. So all you have to do is ask for forgiveness. And then, of course, you know, in Islam, we don't we don't uh, leave forgiveness as just a one principle statement. But the act of repentance has steps to it. Mm -hmm. Once you ask for forgiveness for a specific thing, now you have to put your word out there that I will not be a repeat offender of mm -hmm. what I ask you for forgiveness for. Mm -hmm. And then you have to strive to make your word bond to the God you ask forgiveness to. So if you're in a relationship and you're not yet married, but you've already crossed over into that line, say, you know what? I'm going to ask for forgiveness for doing so already. And I'm going to go back and let's revisit the relationship with no more of the Philly Philly touchy touchy involved in it. And let's get to know each other on a mental and spiritual level. Let's weigh our spiritual characteristics and our personality traits, none of the physical, no more. And let's see if we still feel this strongly about one another. And if the answer is yes, then you, then you ask for her hand in marriage and may Allah bless you with your happily ever after. But that's possible. Now, if you've already started the relationship wrong and you've already gotten married, you still can, in fact, make it because our ability to do right and wrong is not just hinged on us knowing right from wrong. It would be nice to know that just off of knowing that smoking is wrong, that if somebody puts a blunt in front of your face when you're 14 years of age and everybody you know that's doing it you, because you know it's wrong and you never will smoke. But what we have found is that the more evidence we have on how right something is that's good for us, the easier it is for us to participate in that good act. And the more evidence we have on how destructive something is that's wrong to us, the more strength we have to resist uh, that temptation. So our why power really feeds our willpower. Mm -hmm. The more wise you know about something being wrong, the easier it is for you to resist it. So even if you came and started the relationship, you already did that and you all are already married. It is true that the law under which a thing comes into existence gives that thing its nature. Mm -hmm. But you too, after starting off wrong, you can make it right. Because there's some other things uh, that you can do in the relationship to pull the weeds from that have been planted in the relationship wrong from the beginning. And you can sprinkle some divine fertilizer on it and make your love grow in a true and proper way. And, and that uh, you can find a lot of those things in the way you treat each other, the kindness you have, the love you have, the joy you have, and in keeping yourself civil and respectful in your acts of intimacy with one another will, will help feed the God and the pure and the right and not the bestiality and the freakishness in your relationship. And you'll have a healthy respect for each other and things can go too to that same point that it would if you started off right, happily ever after will be yours as well. So, it, you know, we, we've, all, we've all made mistakes, but the God is very anxious and willing to forgive us. We just gotta ask for it and strive not to be a repeat offender of whatever we ask forgiveness for and move on with more evidence on how destructive something wrong is. So we have more why power that gives us some willpower. Mm -hmm. And if we do so, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. And the God uh, can restart, refresh, renew, reset, resurrect, reconcile and restore the relationship like it started off perfect and proper and you will have uh, a great relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Praise be to Allah. You guys hear that? You can make it work out. It's not over. That's so right. Praise That's be right. to Allah. Yes, yes, yes. So we are getting towards the end of the show. I see I have a question here 
from one of the audience here. And if you guys are enjoying the show, please put the fire in the comment box. I need some interaction. So put the fire in the comment box. Praise be to Allah. So I see we have a question here from Raymond Ellis. I think we kind of elaborated on that earlier in the show, but I think this is kind of more in depth. Um, we have um, ex excellent deliver deliberative dialogue, brother, brother Nuri. Is it safe to say that our troubled black male and female relationships started beyond our makeup of the so-called white man? I can't say that uh, for certain, but we can, we do know that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as he taught us in a, several messages, but in specific a message that he did, did call the origin of the white race at a savior's day one year in the 90s. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he made this principal statement that is known in physics. He said, you can't get out of a thing what's not already in it. Mm -hmm. So if the Caucasian came from us, whatever's in him was also present in us. The difference, though, whenever it was in us in the form of what we are taught, known as the brown germ. The Quran says it like this. Every soul comes with it, a driver and a witness. A witness is the unseen force in man that inclines us to good, while the driver is the unseen force in man that inclines us to evil. That's another way of saying black and brown germ. Mm -hmm. In in Far East, they'll call it the yin and the yang. Among the Native Americans, they'll tell you that they'll call it among the Navajos, they call it the good wolf and the bad wolf. On the cartoons back in the day, you would see on the shoulder of, of Daffy Duck, a Daffy Duck on one shoulder in an angel outfit and another Daffy Duck on the other shoulder in a devil outfit. <laughs> Both of them were Daffy Duck on top of Dappy Duck's shoulders, but the angel and the devil, two opposing forces inside the duality of the nature uh, of man. Mm -hmm. What we can say is that there are some and a lot of impediments and problems that we experience as black people today that we did not experience until we were Caucasianized and Westernized by this enemy. So by the fact that just, I, I won't even go all the way back that far before the Caucasian. Do you know that there was a, a group of people that did a observation of, of the marital status of black people in America two years up from slavery in 1867? It's called the McKinley Irvin family law study and they went back to look at the marriages among black people and the success ratio and they found that two years up from slavery nine out of ten of, of all black adults that were eligible to be married were married hmm. nine out of ten with a nearly 100 percent success ratio meaning that 90% of us that were adults were married to each other and we all made it to death do us part. Now you come to the modern time, only one out of four of the black marriages that exist right now are gonna make it because we have a 75% divorce rate. Mm. And only four out of 10 that could be married actually are married. So when you take that math, if only four out of 10 are married and three of them aren't gonna make it, only one out of 10 is gonna make it till death do us part. That, that is today's stats. You don't even have to go back beyond Caucasian. This is fresh out of slavery we still had a near 100% success ratio with 90% of us being married. So I have never heard it taught on or explained about any domestic problems or marital issues we had before we were Caucasianized and Westernized, not to say that there weren't some, 
-hmm. but I have never read about them. But I will say this, that if we can just go back to 1867 and see a 90% marriage ratio with a nearly 100% success, it's a strong possibility and probability that we were getting along well with each other before the enemy was brought on the scene and we began to adopt his lifestyle or what we should call a death style. Mm -hmm. So I can't say for sure, but by my own inference, deduction and reasoning, if we were doing that good in 1867, we probably was doing even better than that yes. trillions of years ago before we ever got contaminated by a satanic culture that came from the making of this Caucasian. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, praise be to Allah. Hope that helps out my brother Raymond. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think you definitely went in depth about that um, and answer that, answer that perfectly, actually. Praise be to Allah. Now, see, I knew y'all was going to do that. Y'all going to send in all these questions before we end the show. Why would I... <sighs> so, if you don't mind, I have no two problem. questions. Yeah. I guess from our audience and yeah <laughs> so we have a question here from brother Samuel X Clark um, he asks what do those who have been through I guess trauma or of misreading of misreading a relationship marriage and it fails not to bring the baggage into a new relationship and be made whole again I hope did you understand that? I hope you did. I think, I think so. I think <laughs> I, I think I do. Um, I want to just suggest to us this: make sure you are single before you try to get married. Mm. And single does not mean that you live in your house by yourself, and as a woman you don't have someone you call a husband, and as a man you don't have someone that you live with that you call a wife. That's just one of the dimensions of being single. Mm -hmm. If you are single in your home, you're physically single. But you want to make sure you're also mentally single mm -hmm. and single in your heart. So don't just be single in the house. You got to be single in your head and also single in your heart. What does it mean to not be single in your head? See, if you are holding pain from a past relationship that causes you to be unjust to the opposite sex mm. because of what a man did to you now you charge all men with being like that so you know you'll be unjust you got resentment in mind toward the opposite sex male or female female to male whichever side you go that means you're not single in your head mm -hmm. and if you still have romantic spousal feelings for someone you used to be with, you're not yet, yet single in your heart. So before you start courting someone to figure out whether you want to get married again, make sure you're not just single in your house, but you're also single in your head without resentment toward the opposite sex for what someone did in the past and single in your heart, meaning that you're not, not still in love with somebody you used to be with. Mm. And if you're single in your house, single in your head, single in your heart you're not bringing any baggage uh with you per se uh, uh about from a past relationship now you're in a healthy position to start new and fresh because it's unjust to come into a relationship and based off of what someone else did you already starting them off the new person at a seven and all they got to do is do a few little things wrong and they already at 10. yeah no, let everybody be their own individual selves and you start them off from a zero and let it go from there. And if you can't do that, that means you're not single in your head or single in your heart, even though you may be single in your house. Mm, you broke that down. Ooh, I never thought of it like that. Mm, praise be to Allah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have one more question here for you. Assalamu alaikum. We have here Brother Enoch Rahim. I hope I said it right. How do we bridge the, the widened gap between black men and women? Widen. Well, the, the simple mathematics is, is just to know that, li listen to the, the Holy Quran. 
Allah says that he placed between the male and the female love and compassion for one another. So if God himself placed between the male and the female love and compassion, if you are a female and has it have anything different than that for a male or male and you have something different than that for the female, whose mind are you operating under? Mm. It's not the mind of Allah. It's not the it's not in, you're not living in accord with nature. So if you want to be in accord with the mind of God, you want to feel love and compassion uh, for for one another. And remember this, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the greatest reward for a good man is a good woman. And the greatest reward for a good woman is a good man. The minister of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. He said, there is no heaven for the black man except that is found in a black woman. So if you want heaven, you have to have a good relationship with your mate. If you want to live in accord with and be operating from the mind of God, you should have love and compassion as a black woman for black men. And you should have love and compassion as a black man for black women. And if you do, then you will be able to tap into that mind of God and find that one that will help you to live in heaven on earth. So that that is the simple uh, formula. And of course, you have to, you know, when you reach a certain level of maturity, you have to make the conscious choice to unlearn behavior that has you not liking yourself or has you not being what you know you could be and start to relearn or learn behavior and thoughts and ideas and wisdom that will make you as you want to be. Mm -hmm. So if you've been raised as a man with an unhealthy view of women, you need to unlearn and mm -hmm. deprogram yourself from the disrespect of women and make sure you do nothing to feed the improper, inappropriate and the lies about women that you've been fed uh, growing up. So there should be no music that's playing uh, in your headphones that calls women out of their name. There should be no program you're watching that takes pride in, in seeing women stripped down, disrespected, stripping, prostituting, mm -hmm. or called out of their name. And the minute that you stop feeding your mind through your ears and through your eyes, information that is against the, the description God gave of that woman, and you start feeding your mind wisdom about the value of the woman, you will deprogram yourself, unlearn behavior that has you thinking negative about your woman, and you will begin to be, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, someone that will respect and protect the black woman. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, you'll start asking yourself, how would I want another man to treat my mother? How would I want a man another man to treat my daughter. And then you would say, whatever I want a man to do for my mother or my daughter, that's what I'm going to do for this other woman. Because after all, she is somebody's daughter and one day may be somebody's mother. So I'm going to treat them the way I want someone to treat my mother or my daughter. And if you do that, brother, you'll have such a healthy respect for, for women and you will be able to extract from the mate you call your wife, the heaven that Allah put in her for you, if you handle her in that way and vice versa on the flip side, you too as a sister, if you understand the man according to what God said about him and the proper relationship to him, unlearning, deprogramming, behavior, false concepts of what a black man is and relearning who he really is, his value, and how you are, uh, are interdependent mm -hmm. on him. And he's interdependent on you. Together, you all will make greatness, excellence, 
power, prosperity, and success happen. But by yourself, it's going to be limited. Mm, 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 mm. I just took so many notes. Ooh. Oh, praise, praise be to be Allah. To Allah. Yes, praise be to Allah. And it's now so many questions rolling in. So we gonna we we might have to come back. Might. Well, just shoot me a few, and then we'll try. We'll try to answer okay. a few real okay. quick. Because they 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 coming in. Check them up twice at <laughs> time. Okay, okay. So I see here. Oh, let me go back up. Um, and we will come back to Sister Angelica, and we won't take so long this time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's fine. You know, I understand. So I see here we have a question here. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, from No Limit TJ, TX6, uh, we have, what does a brother do if you've been with a sister dating for more than three years and you decided to join the nation and knowing we only do courtship and marriage but already made sexual relations? Well, again, you know, as we said earlier, that it is a matter of, of divine law. You, you want to bring yourself and your life in accord with the will of Allah. A Muslim is one that submits their will entirely to the will of Allah. And, and, and don't you know, brothers and sisters, that whatever you submit to, you become like. So the more you submit to a thing, the more like that thing you become. So if we submit ourselves entirely to Allah, we become a God. So even though you've engaged in the relationship inappropriately before you came in the ranks, now you're in the ranks. Now you want to bring God with you mm -hmm. in the new relationship. And more importantly, you want to be able to bring God with you in your process of development. And you are showing that I am submitting my will to do the will of Allah. Therefore, I'm bringing my life in accord with divine law. And remember, the straight path is what the law is. And in mathematics, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Once you make up your mind that you're going to live law and straight then you have the highest and the fastest route to get to what you're trying to get to that is good noble and honorable than anybody in the world everybody else is gonna have to go around and take detours and take the long route but you've got the shortest distance between two points a straight line on that straight path so mm -hmm. even though you have it's time to say you know what we're not um, we don't do that anymore I'm bringing myself in accord with the divine law. If it's meant to be, it will be. But I'm going to follow the laws and the rules and regulations and we'll relate to each other mentally and spiritually, but no longer physically. And let's see what happens. Mm, yes. that's, that's you should have mighty warrior and you can do it. You can do it. And so can she. Yes, yes. That coming into union with Allah. So praise be to Allah. Now, I am so glad that this brother here, and this will be the last question, um, asked this question because this was a question I had in my mind. However, I didn't even ask it. But this is something that I noticed that a lot of the times hinder men into getting into courtship or wanting to be married. Um, so we have a question here from Brother Cordero's ex. Um, Asmala Lakeham says, I apologize. I was able to get on due to work. If Brother Nuri has already covered this, I apologize. If there's time, I wanted to ask a question. What does Brother Nuri have to say to brothers like myself who want and feel they need to be in a certain financial position? before putting in courtship papers and pursuing marriage? Well, you, I mean, it, it is, that shows that you have uh, a healthier respect for the, the woman that you want to marry or, or the woman that you, or any, all women, period, 
you have a healthy respect for her and you want to be able to live up to the job description that is divinely mandated uh, in the scripture. The masculine mandate that comes from God, his gender specific command to us as men is to be the maintainers, the protector and the provider. However, don't allow yourself to have a benchmark of a certain amount of resources to justify whether or not you should get married or not. Stability is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And whenever you are courting, you will at some point be able to lay out to the court mate the reality of the resources that you have. Let me tell you something. They went all over the world on the Today Show in 2012 and they were interviewing couples that had been happily married for over 65 years all over the world. And they were looking for the longevity ingredient. What is it that had these couples happily married for over 65 years and they still held hands and laughed and loved each other? And, and I'm going to tell you this. The longevity ingredient was not finances. It was friendship. It was friendship. So whenever you are in a relationship with someone that you don't just love, but you also like, they're not just your partner, but they also are your friend. Friendship don't require money. Mm -hmm. Friendship just requires love, affinity, affection. You lift my spirit, I lift your spirit. You make me laugh, I make you laugh. We make each other happy. We'll get the money later on. But so <laughs> don't don't stop yourself because you don't have a certain amount of resources. You do want to be stable. You do want to have uh, the ability to at least care for yourself in an organized way before you invite other people into your life. So if you've got some stability and you all can agree with the resources that you have, that maybe she will work a little while, you won't have children for a certain amount of time, et cetera. You all make it, you all make the agreement, but don't, don't deny uh, yourself looking for love because you haven't found enough money yet. Now, friendship is the longevity ingredient, not finance. Mm -mm -mm. I love that. He said the longevity ingredient equal friendships. Woo. Praise be to Allah. I love that. Oh my gosh, brother Nuri. Woo. I took so many notes. I like to take notes while I'm listening because this is like my little time to get a little therapy in. So I took a lot of notes and I am so grateful, Brother Nuri. And if you guys enjoy the show, put your uh, fires in the comment box as we are about to end the show. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All praises to Allah, Brother Nuri. Thank Great. you so much for joining me again to discuss this amazing topic, the divine love of the man and woman part two. I would also like to thank my amazing audience and healing tribe for joining us today. I pray that this episode was informative, valuable, and healing for you all. Also, be sure to share, like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes on any of your favorite podcast station. Closing and get broadcast on Facebook, CTG broadcast on YouTube, and Healing with Angelica podcast on Facebook and YouTube to help spread the message of healing to those in need. Also, if you are ready to start your healing journey and don't know where to start, Healing with Angelica is here to assist as I am offering one-on-one -on -one calls to help get you started on your healing journey. More information to schedule your call will be shown in the comment section below, including Healing with Angelica merch and more. Also, just a friendly reminder, please, any purchases that you make is to help to sustain and support Healing with Angelica. So please keep that in mind as, inshallah, I am planning to expand. Also, if anyone you know or yourself are in need of prayer, Healing with Angelica would like to send a special prayer to you. And you can do this by emailing us at healwithangelica at yahoo dot com brother nori before we end the show i want us to talk a little bit about your new book i'm going to put it up on the screen and i want us i want you to give us some closing remarks 
Well, all praise is due to Allah. You know, first of all, I just would like to say to you, uh, Sister Angelica, that um, we, we appreciate and we applaud your consistency with uh, striving to be an uh, agent of healing for our, our people. The minister said this, he said this once, he said, the more sincere the motive, the more sustained the action. And for you to be uh, committed to, to healing and to having your program this long uh, is a sign that there's a sincere motive in your heart to want to help others. And you'll find, Sister Angelica and others, the more that you do for the people of God, the more the God will do for you as a person. Work to help your people and watch the God work out to help you. So thank you, Sister Angelica, for doing so. Mm -hmm. I am so pleased to announce that this latest book that I will have to say that it's probably my favorite of all. I broke down crying in the editing process, thinking about how valuable this book, The Mathematics of the Mind, will be to our people. Uh, moving forward after they read the book. It, it, it broke me down. And I am pleased to announce that I received a message uh, from Amazon where they told me that we were the number one new release on Amazon for February all over the world <laughs> by the grace of Allah. And I was so touched to see that the ratio of males and females were real close to the same uh, in percentages of those who purchased the book and even deeply touched that the age group that purchased the book the most was 25, 26, 23. That young brother and sister was the ones that purchased the book more than anybody else. So you should get it. And it is uh, for the lack of of a better word, it, it, it is in truth, it is a 33 chapter expose on the power of the mind mm -hmm. and how to unlock that power and put it in the service where you can defeat depression, lose weight, make more money, become a better husband, better father, better savior, whatever you're trying to do, I promise you if you take it and apply the principles of it, it will have you levitating over life's challenges and tapping into unlimited progress for yourself and those that are in your life. So I hope you will, will get it. Uh, it is a, a great read from the feedback uh, from many that have already uh, got it. And I hope you will get, will get yours too on NuriMuhammad.com. Uh, and give us some feedback. Make a review of it. We need your help. Go on after you buy it and read it. Go back and review it because, you know, our people are sheeple. <laughs> I said our people are sheeple. They go wherever the crowd goes. And you, you and, and, you know, I do the same thing, too. I, every time I'm going to buy something online, the first thing I want to do is see how many stars it has. Hey, yeah. <laughs> and then how many people gave it them stars. And the more people gave the stars to and the more star rating it has, the more likely I am to buy, the, buy that product. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to see our people get access to the teachings in a very user-friendly way, then give us some good stars, give us some reviews so that when they go and click on it and say, you know what, I think I am going to get this book. And by the grace of Allah, it will help change uh, their lives. So I hope you will, will tap into it and get it and get it as a gift for a young brother or a young sister in your life. The reason I cry, Sister Angelica, mm -hmm. is because I was thinking about what would have happened to me if I had got this book when I was 16 or 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I could have just known this then how much faster I could have become me now. Yes. And I think that it would do the same for all of us 
uh, if you want to get it and tap into it. The Mathematics of the Mind is available on NuriMuhammad.com. Get it for yourself. Get it for somebody else. Mm, oh, my God. So beautiful. And I can tell that this is this is one of your favorites. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's, al it's already. Get the book, y'all. Please get the book. That's the right. Book. Go ahead, Sister Angelica. That's right. Yeah, get this out. I got mine signed, so <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Praise be to Allah, brother Nuri. Oh my gosh, this was such a beautiful show. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me again uh, to discuss this beautiful topic. Inshallah, we will come back soon. And uh, soon, yeah. soon. Yes, not sir. even a whole month from now. Let's do it in less than thirty days. <laughs> Yes, put my sir. word out there. I put my word out there. Let's make it happen, Sister Angelica. Great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to a lot. Well, I love you all. Thank you all for, for joining us today. And we leave you all as we came. Assalamu alaikum. Peace, healing, and light.